All right, next we are going to talk about microbiome data science workflow. In particular, we are going to talk about the microbiome data science in terms of R and bioconductor tools and tool ecosystems. It is uh, essential to recognize that uh, microbiome research has several different stages from data generation to processing and final analysis and reporting. This is an overview to generic metagenomics workflow um, and it shows how you, you can proceed from uh, metagenomic sequencing data through several different steps of quality control, assembly, normalization and so forth to final downstream analysis of the microbial community profile or more uh, low-level analysis of, of metagenomic sequence contents. Here we are going to primarily focus on the downstream analysis of taxonomic profiling data of the microbial community and these uh, taxonomic profiles of the microbial community can be obtained also by other means than metagenomic profiling. Uh, other common techniques include 16S RNA amplicon uh, profiling we can also use shallow metagenome sequencing or phylogenetic microarrays to do profiling of the taxonomic composition. The taxonomic composition can also be used to predict functional composition of microbiomes um, or the functional composition can be measured by other means. And then we are uh, receiving the multiomics setup where we can combine multiple parallel measurement sources. But now in this um, session we are mainly focusing on the taxonomic profiles and their downstream analysis. So there are certain common study designs in microbiome research as in many other biomedical studies. We have case and control and intervention studies for targeted experimental testing of hypotheses. These are quite often smaller or more limited sample sizes compared to population cohort studies that often have cross-sectional setups where we, where we can measure, for instance, a large population of individuals um, at the given time point. The prospective uh, population cohort studies focus uh, also on the long-term follow-up of the, of the individuals or other entities of observation and uh, then the longitudinal analysis of microbiomes follows the microbiome ecosystem dynamics over time. So these are some examples of common study designs in microbiome research. We have to take into account in the microbiome studies that the microbiome data has certain statistical properties that are essential for the methods development and methods application. So microbiome data is typically sparse. This means that there are lots of zeros when we talk about microbial abundances. A huge number of microbes are, um, are present on, only seldom in, in a small fraction of the samples um, and typically in, in low amounts. There are some microbial species that may, may be more abundant typically in a given environment, uh, but these this kind of microbes are relatively, rel relatively rare, at least proportionally. So there is a long tail of, of very, uh, very um, low prevalence, low abundance taxa. The micro microbial taxa are also typically heteroshedastic, meaning that those microbes that tend to have higher levels of average abundance, they also tend to vary more. Um, they are compositional, uh, usually in, in the kind of data sets that we are operating with. So this means that uh, we, we, in most cases, we can't measure absolute abundances of the microbes um, from the given sample, but, but we are mainly focusing on the compositional abundances, where the uh, proportions of the microbial abundance is sum up to 100%. This, this can potentially lead to some biases in the statistical analysis, because in reality um, the samples typically contain the differing amounts of microbes 
in absolute sense. And when we do this compositional transformation, summing up everything to 100% in every sample, we introduce certain type of bias in the analysis. And there are ways to deal with this in microbial analysis. There is also vast amount of variation that is not well understood. You can call it stochasticity. And uh, microbiomes are also hierarchical. For instance, there, there are different phylogenetic levels. The different microbial species are related in various ways. They come from different higher level families and phyla. And um, they have they have different relations that we may may want to take into account in in the downstream analysis of such data. So the microbiome data properties are many, and these statistical properties have to be taken into account in the downstream analytics. Several different frameworks have been developed to do uh, open microbiome data science that that can um, take these specific properties into account and provide tools for many common study designs. These has, have certain differences. Uh, some of them, like ANVI, are more, more focused on the low-level analysis of, of the uh, metagenomic sequencing data. Others provide uh, tools for downstream analysis of the microbial community data and data integration, like Motor and Chime 2. Today um, we are talking mostly about the Bioconductor ecosystem, which is um, one open source software ecosystem for bioinformatics, uh, and particularly focusing on the R language. The workflow for microbiome community analysis contains similar steps uh, compared to other data science workflows. So there, there are the steps of data import, through data processing and analysis to final reporting of the results. And in a typical workflow thinking in data science, we want to focus also on making the workflows reproducible so that we can uh, run the analysis easily later. And we want to focus on making them open so that we can share all the details, all the, all the technical details of the data processing, starting from the Data, data import to the final reporting of the results after the analysis. And um, we and others have been writing about microbiome workflows and uh, I can recommend a good article about this, uh, summarizing many of the steps um, in taxonomic profiling analysis by um, Ben Callahan and others. So if we look at the steps in the, this typical workflow for microbial community analysis, it starts with data import. And the data import typically has at least the steps of container preparation, where we import the microbiome data in a certain environment. Uh, in, in our case, we import it in R and Bioconductor, and we prepare a particular data container. We are coming back to this. And then there will be sanity checks on how, um, how good the data is, if it's corresponding to our assumptions and if it seems to be good quality. So standardized data containers that I mentioned are central for the R and Bioconductor ecosystem. So we need to have a data in a certain given agreed standard format so that we can have an ecosystem of tools around that, supporting the analysis of such, such data by the community of users. So standard, standardized data containers are central, um, central for the overall ecosystem of data analysis. And in the context of microbiome research, we are specifically using the three summarized experiment data container. This container has um, particular properties. It, it integrates different types of data. Uh, starting from the taxonomic profiling data, but also including uh, different types of side information for the taxonomic features and for the samples. We are explaining this uh, in another session in more detail. But this data container provides standardized way of representing microbiome data uh, in, in a systematic format that many different tools can understand. Then follows the data analysis part. So in the data analysis part of taxonomic community profiles, we typically analyze alpha and beta diversity, meaning the, the species diversity and community, 
composition and uh, we can also do differential abundance analysis comparing different conditions between each other um, and so forth. There are different um, different methods, uh, but alpha di diversity and beta diversity analysis and differential abundance analysis are very standard ways to look at microbiome data. Other frequently um, encountered analysis types include community typing, uh, which is kind of clustering of mi microbiome samples based on their community composition, co-occurrence networks, for instance, co-occurrences of, of different taxonomic groups. Uh, across samples and we can also look look at other things like phylogenetic balances what is the ratio of microbial abundances across different samples for given given microbial groups and then of course there is visualization that we can we can do to report these results so these are some typical tasks in microbial community analysis and they are part of the microbiome data science workflow in the R bioconductors ecosystem we have a um, standardized way of sharing the tools that implement these different types of analysis. So um, our packages are units uh, that uh, contain standardized and quality controlled tools for microbiome analysis or other topics. For microbiome research, there is an ecosystem of packages around the three summarized experiment data container and there are also example datasets available from Experiment Hub and other sources. So these tools complement the three summarized experiment data container by providing additional capabilities of analyzing data that is in that format. By this way, by standardizing the tools, we can reduce overlapping efforts by the community, improve interoperability between the tools and ensure longer term sustainability by uh, using good quality control on the tools. And the final step in the microbial community anal analysis workflow includes the reporting of the results. We want to do reproducible reporting and summaries of the data that, uh, that provide a full record of the analysis steps. When we put all these steps together from the data import to construction of the data container to the analysis of the data from that format to the final visualization and summarizations, we, we get a workflow for microbiome analysis. And this, uh, this uh, is one possible workflow um, in the R and Bioconductor ecosystem that utilizes already existing tools that, that we can use for these different purposes. Here is a website address at the bottom of the page that contains links to resources that show more examples about these workflows and how to construct them in practice. And uh, finally, we are also providing several reproducible examples and tutorials that uh, provide um, detailed information on how to replicate various standardized analysis in microbiome research in R and Bioconductor. Uh, these are collected in an online book uh, orchestrating microbiome analysis with R and Bioconductor that you can find from this web address. And this is still beta version, but it is in active development and, and functional. Uh, it is uh, fully reproducible, so all the examples have been automatically tested for every version of the book.